Hey there, in this video, I wanna talk about boundary value problems. In short, a boundary value problem is when you have a mix of starting and ending conditions. Previously, we learned how to solve initial value problems where you have enough initial conditions that you can step forward in time and see what happens. Uh, so by way of example, let's say we have a ball that's been thrown upwards, comes down under the effect of gravity. We'll do a real simple equation, one so simple that in principle, well, not even in principle, in physics one, you can do this equation by hand. Um, but this is just for illustration's sake. So we start at y initial equals zero, an unknown v initial, but we do know that we're going to catch the ball, and so it's going to be back at y equals zero after time t equals 10 seconds. Now let's look at the, the way we've already learned how to do differential equations and see why it falls short. So uh, we're going to start by putting this equation into Python form. So we'll start by defining g is 9.8 y initial, our initial condition, is 0, t final equals 10, and we're going to define a function here that represents our differential equation. So if we're going to use uh, scipy for this, first is the independent variable t, and then the dependent variable, which in this case is a mix of y's and v's, so I'm going to put them into a single array called r. First thing I'm going to do in my code then is unpack r, and then we can calculate dy dt, which by definition is v, dv dt is the equation written up here, so it's equal to negative g, and then we return those. And we have to make sure we return them in the same order we unpacked, so y has to come first, or dy dt has to come first, rather, dy dt, and then dv dt. And if we're using scipy, recall that we, we can just leave these as an implied tuple, we don't have to wrap them in as, as an array, although it doesn't hurt to. Okay, so that's just our equation in Python form. Now, the issue here is with an initial value problem, I have to have two initial conditions, like I have to have a v initial. So in effect, what I'm really doing here is just guessing what v initial was. And ultimately, that is going to be what the shooting method does, is it guesses, but it guesses in a systematic way that can then give you a result. Uh, so anyway, before we get to that, let's just, let's just power through here. So our t here, this is going to represent the time values that I solve the equation at. So I want to go from 0 to t final, and uh, we'll do some number of steps. Let's just say 51. And then we can solve our differential equation. So uh, out of integrate, which I've already imported, we're going to use solve IVP for initial value problem. We'll give it the function. We'll give it the range of time values that I want to solve for, so that'll be zero to t final. We'll give it the initial conditions, that would be y initial and v initial. And then um, by default, this picks how many points it solves at. I wanna control that, so I'm gonna feed in the t I defined up here, down here with t eval, so I get lots of points in my solution. Then I can unpack the solution. y and v are gonna be living in a variable called y in our solution, which is, I know, a little confusing. So the dot y here is SciPy's way of naming all of our values. I could make things a little more consistent by using a y up here, but then that's super confusing because we're going to take y and unpack it into y and v and no. So that's why I use a different variable name. Okay, in any case, we can now plot e, y, and um, with only 51 points, I think we'd be okay with dots. And upon plotting, we see that we did not land 10 seconds later. 10 seconds later, we're still up in the air. Okay, so what that means is this, this, was, this guess was too large. Now we could try something smaller. You know, we could try like uh, 55. Okay, we're getting closer. And so we could keep guessing initial values until it ended up landing. Like actually, if we do this by hand, we're gonna see that the answer I think is actually 49. So, um, which would just be half a 9.8 times two. Yeah, so it actually it looks like, you know, after enough guesses, we could get to where we wanted to be. And so what we want to do here with the shooting method is write code that does this for us. Now, again, this was a differential equation that is not too hard to see how it depends on V initial. It's a very simple equation, one we could do analytically by hand. Other equations have more complex relationships, and so it might not be as simple as just turn this number down until you hit the answer. Okay, in any case, uh, the approach I'm going to show you here will work for those more complicated equations. 
So what I want to do here is effectively create a function for y final. Like where do we land at? So when v initial was 49, then we landed at zero, and that's the answer. When it was 60, we landed at, oh, it looks like 100 sum. And so I'm going to create a function y final that depends on v initial. So with different v initials, we end at different heights. And you know what I'm going to try to do is find out when does this function give me zero. This is something I could use a root finder for. Okay, and so then in here, what we need to do is solve a differential equation. In fact, it would be exactly this differential equation here. So we can copy those two lines of code. So we're going to take f here as our original function defined above, 0 to t final. We give it the initial conditions. v initial now is the input to the function. And then what we can do at the end is return just what y final was. So y is an array of values. I just want the last thing in it. One more change I can make for the sake of efficiency is I don't have to calculate all those in-between points. So like in a graph like this, I actually only need the last point. And guaranteed solve IVP will at minimum give you the first and last point and probably a few points in between. So I can take that out. It'll make the code a little bit faster by cutting down on where it has to evaluate the function. Okay, so then what I can do is I can try a range of the initials that will, we'll say, definitely be in the range 0 to 100. And we'll try 100 of them. And that's just for the sake of visualization here. We'll let the actual shooting method determine um, on its own how many values it needs to evaluate. Anyway, we're going to plot y and or sorry v initial and y as a function of v initial we'll draw a grid that'll make it easier to see where the crossing point is at and then also add a horizontal black line so color here is black that'll again help me visualize where we're crossing at and we'll show it now one last line we need here for this to actually run is this function here is kind of complicated like so we give it v initial which i'm going to try to pass in as an array so for this to work we want to vectorize the function the other way to tell is we run it without vectorizing it crashes and then we say oh maybe we should have vectorized it all right and so here we get uh, this is y final as a function here of v initial and what we can see is that they cross at about 50. So that means that we could use a root finder to try to find our exact solution. So when doing this method, it's a good idea to make a plot like this so you know where to look for the solution or solutions. There might be more than one, depending on your equation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the secret method. But we've learned several ways to find where a function is equal to zero. Uh, this one lives in scipy.optimize, um, which I think I've already imported. We'll, we'll see if it crashes. And it's called Newton. And so remember, the, the secret method is a version of the newton raphson method where you haven't told it the slope. And, you know, more often than not, you're lazy or you don't have access to the slope. Okay, so we'll do that. And it looks like that that was around 50. And, you know, we know that analytically the answer should actually be 49. And then we'll print our answer and find out that, yeah, it's 49, at least within floating point precision. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use that v initial plot the actual solution. Arguably, we've already solved the problem. As soon as we found this v initial, we found the thing we wanted. This is mostly a sanity check, is what was the path that was actually taken. So to do that, uh, we want our t's. So that's going to be our lens space. We're going to we already defined those um, way up here, but just just so we have our code all in the same place. Basically, what I want to do is take this cell, and instead of guessing v initial 60, I want to use the v initial that I calculated with the secant method, and I want to plot it. And then we'll see it's the arc that goes up, comes down and hits the ground and we've solved for the initial condition we've also as a side effect we have the means to get the exact path followed by the ball so we could extract other information like what was the maximum height reached for example